First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to verse 18. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. I'm Prophet Ezekiel Melchizedek. I come your way with the words of comfort while we are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay tuned. Hallelujah. The world. Praise God. The world. What I did on the cross. Go and tell the whole world. Why is there need for this comforter? 
because a comforter is somebody who comforts. Why do a person need comfort? We need comfort because Jesus know that because of our faith, our new man faith as Christians, we are bound to suffer so many things, bad things, but that should not put us off. Because Jesus Christ, the Comforter, is forever with us. So we need to understand these things. The Comforter, he comes on purpose because he knows that one may be tempted to feel sad. One may be tempted to weep. One may be tempted to cry. One may be tempted to be discouraged because of trials, persecutions, afflictions, infirmities, and the problems that we will face as children of God. So, as Christians, God wants us to persevere and overcome these temptations. That is why He comes to give us the Comforter. And He, the Bible says, He will abide with us. John chapter 14. Still read. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you, 16, another Comforter that He may abide with you ever. Verse 17. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, and he dwelleth with you, and shall abide in you. So, he is describing the comfort of and he says, the comforter is a spirit. Is what? A spirit. You are not referring to a human being. You are not referring to an animal. You are not referring, referring to a wife or a husband. You are not referring to a car or a house. You are not referring to a new ship. A new suit. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not referring to our friends and loved ones. But they will be the ones to be our comforter, to comfort us. We are not referring to money. But money will be our comforter, to comfort us. But he was referring to the spirit. Hallelujah. He said, even the spirit of truth. So, the Comforter is a Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And he says it's a Spirit of Truth. He's not, he's not talking about demonic spirits. He's not talking about marriage spirits. He's not talking about witchcraft spirits. He's not talking about an occult spirit. But he's talking about the Spirit of Truth. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of Truth. Now, that is the Holy Spirit. He comes with truth. So he can really be our comforter. He can comfort us. Because Jesus knew that the journey is not going to be an easy task. The journey, the programming journey, we are pilgrims. The word of the Lord tells us. A pilgrim is somebody who is on a holy journey. In other words, a pilgrim is somebody who is journeying to a holy land. It's a pilgrim. The pilgrimage, or the pilgrimage is a journey. So the Christian walk is a pilgrimage. 
way of going. See the holy land. We are marching Still believing, he 
it seems Jesus is delaying that you keep praying, keep trusting, then you know that he will show up. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit comforts us, tells us, don't give up, keep on praying. Even though you have prayed and not seen answers, the comforter says, Keep on praying. Keep believing. Keep trusting. The miracle is on the way. Hallelujah. So, he speaks the truth because he is the spirit of truth. And the Bible says, He will abide in us. Verse 18, John chapter 14, verse 18. I will not leave you from purpose. I will come to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we will not be left comfortless. You know, we have people who are comfortless. These are the worldly people. They are those who can commit suicide. Because they are comfortless. When things are bad, they cannot withstand the bad times. When they hear bad news, there is no comfort for them. Because they are hopeless people. There is no way they can derive comfort from So Jesus Christ comes to be our comforter. With his spirit, the Holy Spirit. He says, I will come to you. How is he coming? Not in the flesh, but he's coming with his Holy Spirit. That is why it doesn't matter what we see, it doesn't matter what we hear, it doesn't matter the problem at stake, it doesn't matter the problem at hand. We still trust him to be our God, to be our guide, to be our deliverer, to be our redeemer, to be our savior. Hallelujah. My comforter. Jesus is my comforter. Jesus is my comforter. I am not alone. Oh. Jesus is my comforter, slow.
precious one, you're watching the Yes, Your Artist broadcast. God bless you for watching. We are spreading the gospel to the nations. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. The Bible says, This gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness against the nations before the end of the world shall come. Yes, now we want to invite you to support the work of God, sponsor the work of God, be a partner in this broadcast. You can send your tithes, your seeds, your offerings, oh yes, your partnership offerings, and the Lord will bless you. Look at the number shown in the screen. You can call the telephone numbers. You can also look at our banking details. I believe that God is going to bless your life. Now, you know to know that the gospel is a fertile soil where you can sow your seed. So God will give you a harvest of righteousness. When you give, the Bible says, it shall come back to you with measure press down. Shaking together, running over, shall be given unto you. Because in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And I want you to understand that God has a package of blessings for you as he sponsored this broadcast. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. You're welcome back. I believe that message was a timely message. God spoke to you in the car of your hand. It may not be speaking to you in this way. I want to tell you that it's a time for decision. Decision is the greatest power that God gave you. It is time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's not a big deal now. You want to give your life to Jesus, just pray this way after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for saving me. I receive you into my life. Forgive my sins and wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just pray that prayer, I want you to understand that you are born again. Now you live in principle as a born again child of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. The Bible says, If anyone is in Christ a new creation, go Lord Jesus have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So now it is time for me to pray and speak into your destiny. I want you to touch my palm with your finger like this on the screen right now. Whatever you are believing God for, just have join your faith with mine as we pray. God is going to touch your life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this precious soul. That your grace, your power, your glory, your anointing will visit them. Be their redeemer, be their deliverer, be their savior. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Open doors that the enemy is closed. Business doors open, financial doors open, marital doors open. Doors of opportunities. May the Lord heal your bones and deliver you from every demonic affliction and suppression. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for touching your children. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that God has touched your life and changed your destiny. And I believe that you like to worship with us. You can worship. Hallelujah. Psalm 120. You are here. The Bible says, I was glad when they said, Moving in, in and out of me. Lord. My name is Prophet. I worship you. Also known as the Yeshua Artist Minister. You are here. I want to opportunity to invite you to watch Working in this. Working in this. 9 a.m. till noon. I worship you. And every Wednesday morning is 9 a.m. I worship is you. Operation Sam. You are here. Service. And then Moving in and out of me. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. Hello, precious friend. My name is Prophet Ezekiel Nekizel. Hallelujah. Psalm 122, verse 1. The Bible says, I was glad when they saw unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to worship what I said. Are you with Tom Brown? The establishing Christian Church worldwide. LCCW, aka Shah Artist Ministry. Yes, I wait on branch services and food. Sunday, 5 p.m. in the evening. Okay, it's the emergency service. And the Wednesday is also 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's also perfect solutions. We are located opposite the high fence, deeper life area. I wait on New Weather, Accra, Ghana. When Paris comes up the numbers now, sharing your screen. I believe that God will touch your life. Your life will never be the same. Hallelujah.